Hello, it's me. Um, if you haven't met me before, my name's Sunday, and um, a very warm welcome to you, to healing parents. Um, so I've been, I put a post in today into the group about, um, have you still got things that you feel that you've still got to forgive yourself for as a parent? And I also tagged on, especially around the first stages of estrangement and maybe reactions and stuff like that. And it's interesting because I am witnessing quite a few people who are perhaps experiencing defensiveness, saying, well, I didn't do anything wrong and da da da, -da and, um, and it got me to thinking around how we give ourselves permission to feel wrong, like make mistakes, because nobody, well, do you, if you got to a place where you actually don't mind making mistakes, because you kind of know now at this age, perhaps, that living in, in, inevitably through living, you just, but we're bumbling along because we have no idea how to do anything that's new. So invariably we make mistakes, but then there's a wisdom inside of us now where we know that if we'd have known better, we'd have done it differently. And you know, you have to clean up the mess and then you apologize and then you get back onto doing it differently. That's, that's my understanding of life. And so when somebody did approach me ages ago and said, you know, have you forgiven yourself? It was sort of a, st at first it stirred some resistance in me to say, well, I haven't done anything wrong, you know, but secretly I knew I had. <laughs> because all that stuff, the way that I parented them when they were little, there was huge mistakes that I made. You know, I shouted a lot, I got angry, I was um, not at all patient at times. What we perhaps consider normal parenting, um, not being in a calm and collected and resourced state and saying and doing things that we regret, so that's a good place to look, you know, where are your regrets, where are you, or where do you feel like you let yourself down, that's another place, you know. And sometimes you can actually see yourself repeatedly letting yourself down. The things that we do to ourselves, the harshness, of, have you forgiven yourself but for being really mean to yourself? Like that's massive, most of us give ourselves a hard time thinking that if I crack the whip against myself, I'll do better next time. But the, it's sort of reverse tactics. The more you punish yourself, the more you it feels, just feels dreadful. Not only are you making mistakes, you're giving yourself a hard time about it. And so so that, that sort of um, recognition where I let myself down, break my integrity, where I don't feel honorable, where I know that I'm shouted at somebody in, in my temper, exasperation. How do I get to a place of self-forgiveness around all of that? Because that's a good starting place. Somebody said, well, what have I got to forgive myself for? Well, have a look. <laughs> there's there's oodles of stuff in my history. And, and unless we start to unpick that, you know, and, and look around, poke around in those dark corners that perhaps we don't really want to look at, where our shadow sign, that's what it's called, where we stored stuff away that, that we're ashamed about or that we regret and we, we never actually found that person and said sorry to them, you know, fights that we had at school, all that sort of stuff, gossiping about other people, you know, that's breaking your integrity when you start to gossip. Gossip is such a good thing to look at. Where do I tell tales about other stories about other people or give opinions to other people on other people? You know, <laughs> it's, there's loads of stuff. And then you see, then when you've sort of identified, oh my God, I did this, oh my God. So you're sort of like doing a regret, shame and guilt inventory. Great place to start. Painful, don't do it alone maybe, get some support. Do it with a buddy, 
do it with somebody that who, who you love and that you trust and then you can clear out all this garbage that you're trying to protect yourself from feeling thinking remembering it's a way of clearing out the the cack the, you know the the poison that we're carrying really and then you can start from a clean slate and then you can actually start oh look there's I there I go again just about to do some old thing that I know doesn't work and before I do it I'm going to stop and then if you do do it especially you know relationships are a great place because very often we say snappy things to the people that we love that we live with and that's not great because there's some energy that's not right there so you know when you do it afterwards you say I'm sorry I lost the plot there and and if you do live with somebody, most of us do, I think, in here, you know, that's a great place to practice. Where do you let yourself down where you do things, say things that you regret? Or I know a lot of us are like, do this, mm, well, they deserved it. Mm, mm. But there's something inside of us that when we lose our temper, as an example, we don't feel good afterwards. We feel like we've let ourselves down. We feel like we've abused somebody, um, been unkind, and yeah. So, short but sweet today, you know, have a look. Have a look at where you feel. And maybe I can give you an example of, you know, as a younger person, I've already said, I, was, I used to get cross, impatient, sharp, um, forceful you know a, a bit of a bully um and, the, and there's a quite a lot of people you know that i've if they if i haven't seen them if they're still not i mean there was a girl at school that i had a fight with you know and have i forgiven myself for yes i have you see so many of the times i think what we do is well she made me and at, at that at that young age you know well she goaded me into doing it you know, if you're angry and somebody says, come on, man, I don't know, I don't know if you were in the fighter, but I was a fighter, you know. Um, but the other sort, the passive aggressive stuff, you know, like um, being mean to another school friend, you know, I remember once somebody, I didn't do this, but this was done to me, somebody stuck chewing gum on the back, you know, the zip on the back of your tunics or whatever, somebody stuck chewing gum on the back of their, well, if you've ever stuck chewing Chewing gum on clothes is awful, you know, and things, kids are unkind to each other. But those habits do tend to come into us, passive aggressive behaviours. You think about it, you know, excuse me, you know, when um, you cross with your loved one and you can see that they're about to do something that's going to result in a bit of a disaster and you don't tell them, you just stay quiet. <laughs> hands up who's done that you know you've allowed them to just go into this pit that's unkind you know coming clean about all that stuff is great because you can't do it then you know it's like the secret's out you have to own you have to own it you know so if you think you haven't got anything to forgive yourself for regardless of estrangement you know let's just talk about your life from when you were young, you know, like, what did you say to your parents that you regret saying? Whoa, that's a big one, isn't it? You know, and the things that you did that you knew you took advantage of them. If your parents are still alive, you might you might want to apologise to them and clean it up. It feels good to clean it up. It feels good to forgive yourself. And it is a journey, self-forgiveness, because once we've got past the, I've got nothing to forgive myself for, it can be really uncomfortable to look at the things that we've done that we know in our heart of hearts that we either, if if we, we wouldn't have done it now for, for a start off or we know we shouldn't have done it or, you know, things like stealing. I guess all of us have nicked stuff in our time, you know, maybe some of us still do. What do you steal? Like, not just, not just things, but you know, have a think about what you what you've stolen in the past. Um, maybe we have got some really 
goody two-shoe people in here and who've never done anything to anyone. I find that really difficult to believe, but <laughs> I'm willing to, to say if you really truly think that you've never done anything harmful to anybody else or anything that you regret, you know. So I left a marriage and I was, I struggled to, um, Feel, feel guilty about leaving my marriage because I guess it was interesting this I was sort of like well you know I did it because I had to do it and that sort of thing and um, then I realised that it did break a lot of people's hearts when I left my marriage and I'm not sorry for doing it I'm, and it was it took a long time for me to discern the difference between I, was, I wasn't sorry for doing it and I was sorry for the effects that it had on others and in hindsight I would have done my separation and divorce very differently absolutely 100% differently and of course I've not done a divorce before so I had nothing to base it on ne and neither had any of my siblings or my parents so I had nothing to go on so getting to a place of thinking instead of feeling defensive about me leaving the marriage and the effect it had on my children and on my ex-husband, you know, um, and also myself, you know, I had to get to a place where I realised that I had, by that choice, I had created harm that people had felt really, why wouldn't they, you know, me leaving meant that the whole family structure changed, they had to, they had to sell the house that they were living in, the family home, because I actually left the family home. And so, and it's only been recently that I have realised and been happy to own the fact that actually there is, an there is an apology due, which is, I'm really sorry that I did it the way that I did it. You know, I know, I recognise it hurt a lot of people, it broke a lot of hearts. So, yeah, self-forgiveness. What else have I forgiven myself for? I've forgiven myself for being short-tempered and a tyrant with my kids at times. I've cried a lot around that, you know. I felt really bad about the way that I was. I recognise that it's a family pattern. Um, I worked really hard to let go of those violent tendencies that I had. Um, I'm, and the, the, one of the things that helped me was not only the harm that I was doing others, but the harm I was doing myself by being like that. By being angry and volatile and reactive I felt doubly bad afterwards you know I felt bad at the time when I was being like that and I was late I was attributing my behavior to other people that they were stimulated triggering me into those reactions and that's not taking responsibility for myself. That was putting all the responsibility with them. You have to be a certain way so I don't shout at you. Blooming heck. <laughs> Talk about not wanting to take responsibility. And, I, and I, you know, now I think anybody can be how they choose to be around me. And it's my responsibility how I react and respond to being triggered. You know, sometimes I have to sit on myself really hard because there's things that I want to say and do. And I think, no, I'm not willing. I'm not willing to not only hurt them, I'm not willing to hurt myself by breaking my integrity and knowing that I'm going to regret it. And that has been one of the best things that I let. I'm not willing, just not willing to break my integrity anymore for, for myself. As well as hurt these other people that you know, however they're being, I'm just, because I used to fight like with like, you know, what I got, I gave as good back, you know, that was the environment I was raised in, so I learned that, so I had to unlearn it, and it wasn't easy, and going back into those similar situations, those similar, similar stimuluses, is really quite challenging at times, you know, if people show up in their, how they did when I was younger, I so want to show up how I was when I was younger, and I don't. It's not easy. <laughs> oh. But yes, yeah, self-forgiveness. It feels wonderful. It feels... And the other thing about self-forgiveness is if we carry guilt, even if it's sort of tucked away 
and we haven't acknowledged it. it and this really does um, apply to adult as child estrangement. If our adult children come into, back into our lives and they start wagging the finger at us and blaming us for how we were, if we haven't cleaned it up in ourselves, we're going to be defensive, we're going to be reactive, we're not going to have to be able to have a connection and communication with them. So if my kids came to me and you used to smack us when we were little, you know, I can categoric and, and we don't like that and we, you know, all that aggression that they throw at us maybe. If I haven't cleaned that up in myself, which I have, I'm just going to be reactive. I'm going to be defensive and reactive and deny, perhaps even deny it, which is ridiculous because I can't. <laughs> um... And so it, it's really useful to be able to clear out the vessel and, and own the stuff that you wished you hadn't done when you were angry or younger or, or ignorant or didn't know any better. There's that lovely phrase by Maya Angelou that says, when we know better, we do better. And that, that's one of the phrases that's helped me. You know, I didn't know back then. We didn't know. You didn't know. We didn't know how to do it different. We were acting out of programme out of our conditioning, out of the things that we'd witnessed in our own family, etc, etc. And we were kids, you know, we were exploring life and, and what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? You know, and if, if you're curious and a bit reckless like I was, you know, if you're a bit of an adventurous child, um, you did stick your fingers into things and you did get yourself into bother and because that's what life's all about. It's about exploring. But it's like being okay with getting things wrong. You know, we don't like that. And yet when you are going into unknown territory and we don't know how to do it. And so we are going to make mistakes and that's how we learn. And it, it's so, it's just so trite, that saying, isn't it? When, when we can only learn by making mistakes. And it, it, we know it, but we hate it. And like, here I go, making a mistake, perhaps or not. <laughs> it takes courage. It takes courage. And I think as we get older, I think it gets harder to do, to take those unknown steps. It's better, perhaps, to just stay with what we know, but then we get a limited life and we don't flourish. And there's that guy who said, if I knew I was going to live this long, I'd have made sure I made lots more mistakes. And that's quite funny, isn't it? If I knew I was going to live this long, I'd have made a load more mistakes. Anyway, I love you and leave you. Thank you for coming on and watching. Hello, everybody. I'll speak to you again real soon. Lots of love. Bye.